Good afternoon and welcome once again to the Polity reaching you from Abuja. I am Amadine Ogbewe. Uh, now today we'll be delving into a host of issues bordering on the state of the nation. I've been joined now by Mr. Yahuza Getso. He's a security expert and a policy analyst uh, to do justice to some issues making the rounds across the nation today. Good afternoon and welcome to the program, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, thank you for it's having good me. To have you. Time it's a great right. pleasure. Uh, there, there's a lot happening, but let's start with security, which is more of your field, mm. and um, before we delve into some other issues. Yeah. Um, there is a trending matter that, to an extent, borders on security, uh, much sort of an investigation. Speaking about the death, the death of the popular musician Mobad. Mm -hmm. uh, just yesterday, we have now that um, one of the um, Persons of interest, Naira Mali, as it's called, has been taken into custody, is back in Nigeria and is being questioned over the death. I'd like to get your thoughts as to how you think the investigation can move in a way uh, as to yield, you know, uh, the, the results that are desirable to everyone. Because as you can see, uh, a, a host of people have taken interest in this, even going as far as protesting and taking to the streets. Well, I have to commend the public. Uh, especially the uh, average age, the middle class age, uh, who are really interested in what is happening. Because uh, this is something to do with uh, the nation. Uh, a lot of people are being killed. Uh, many have been assassinated. Um, the average class, the popular and the unpopular, the masses, the rich, the poor, and the acad academia, academicians, among others. Uh, but uh, because the public have not shown interest, and have not given it adequate attention. And um, much uh, mass mobilization have not been made uh, to follow up on the process of the investigation. Most of this, the situation, what you hear is um, a commission of inquiry have been set, uh, or a professional team of investigators have been engaged to conduct ABCD by the police or by any, the, the central investigation unit or the uh, federal investigation or force investigation, whatever. But at the end of it, you will not had any feedback. So, but um, uh, why I'm happy with this situation, it is like uh, showing a torchlight or putting a torchlight that has been off, on. Because the Nigerian police and the investigation process are already, they are the torchlight. But the problem, it hasn't been on. Uh, it's supposed to be on by public. Uh, that will help in pushing them in order to do what is right so that uh, the necessary procedures will be utilized. It, of, of course, uh, usually you, there will never be a killing of a such without an element that will guide and lead to the prosecution of who is responsible, especially going by the modern techniques that we have. And um, I salute the Nigerian police uh, leadership for swinging into action. And I salute the Nigerian youth and the middle class, as well as the other um, highly, highly profile individuals who shown interest and who are really pushing in the matter. That is why I'm always advocating, even among all the other cases of the uh, kidnappers and bandits that have been um, arrested in part of the northern part of the country, and uh, even some cases of also other criminals in the south, south, uh, southwest, and southeast, and north central, and um, northwest. Any time a criminal is arrested, is apprehended in your community it shouldn't be the issue of who he hurt it should be the collective responsibility if the police or any investigation uh, authority realize that whenever i could remember when when i was in one of the states uh, i was in one new estate so whenever there is uh, any apprehension of uh, any burglars because it was a new estate so we suffered a lot of issues of uh, burglaries Bog uh, burglars uh, common thieves that used to jump through your wall and do a b c d so what we did all of us in the morning once one of them is apprehended everybody will take excuse from his working place so all the cars will take a convoy as if we are going to graveyard or as if we are going to the mosque, or as if we are going to the church, or as if we are going for a wedding, or we are delivering a, a, a bride to, to her, her home. So that's so because of that, and looking at the caliber of the personality of the people, because sometimes we'll be up to 150 at one police station. So that serves as a message. And when DP or the division of police officer, or the CRO, or anybody, or uh, uh, to ICO, whosoever is in, uh, in, uh, in the station, 
ask us please go we'll deal with the matter we'll say no we are here until the matter is dealt with and if the person is uh, uh, prosecuted before the court of law likewise on any day of the judge will sit we also move in mass that will help in a kind of bringing back the uh, loss to glory on the police loss to glory on the civil defense loss to glory on the immigration loss to glory on the military if at all people uh, the masses the nigerian public are showing interest as what the interest being shown on the uh, the case of um uh, uh Mobad that has been killed uh, i'm sure th many things will have been dealt with so yes, like the case of the bandits that i have been saying that effects. of course it has effects serious effects and it's very very important we, if all the people from northern nigeria yeah. will take the the the, the, the bull to the, to the to the horn will take the responsibility remobilize themselves like i said none of the criminals none of the bandits none of the kidnappers that is not known in any community where they are operating they are all known i can easily make their prof profile them and i have made a lot of prof profiling of almost most of them but because we don't have a serious system we don't have a serious government we don't have a serious security agency and a lot of corruption have been uh, kind of uh, uh, being uh, uh, affected the, uh, uh, is affecting the system so i think um it is good to have a uh, demonstration but demonstration not in the situation whereby people will come out with uh, uh, machets and other local arms or whatever no do a peaceful demonstration and not even a demonstration present your case if somebody is apprehended in kazana uh, in, in bazari for example then the bazari people should make a convoy and go to the divisional police station and from there if the person is moved to the cid do a convoy and do a seat at prison if he is deposited at the prison by the by the, by the judge until next time deposit hundreds of your use to stay in front of the prison until justice is done and until the person is either killed or dealt with according to the law based on what he or she does no, don't you think this can lead to uh, an issue between the police and the people trying to put pressure uh, we've even seen cases where as someone who is uh, at a police station to make a report mm -hmm. sometimes uh, you get that the person in question gets apprehended or gets put behind bars and uh, we know of a case where once mm -hmm. upon a time a young lady was um, uh, raped well al allegedly but and um I guess her, her assailant, not allegedly anyway, because her, mm -hmm. uh, the culprit no confessed, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we we saw that the police were, uh, quote unquote, begging the young lady to accept his apology to the point that uh, she even ended up being apprehended because she was deemed to be uh, being difficult. So can can we apply this ca this pressure that you speak of physically or? Do you think it's something that should be done using social media and other spaces? Well, you know, there are three measures that need to be taken in this case. One, there should be a, a kind of a pressure from the human rights lawyers and human rights activists and the human rights civil society organizations. Mm. They should mount a pressure by making it a public affair, by putting it on the social media, by putting it on the modern media, by using any other means, any other outlet, and by writing the authority, and also uh, that is one. And secondly, uh, there should be a kind of using the same operating system that we are talking, demonstration or peaceful pressure, mountain pressure as a team, by the use from where she came from or from any other part of Nigeria, we can easily mobilize ourselves. Now, if I want to mobilize one million people, I can easily go on the social media. I have over o over one million followers, and I know other people who are have the same interest of pursuing pursuing the interest of um, uh, somebody who is less privileged or whatever. So we can put our heads together easily, and uh, go to the divisional police or whatsoever. This is uh, and, uh, and and this is this case that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's indicate that the police, the divisional police, they are criminals themselves because these are not supposed to be begging her to, for, to, to forget him he's supposed to face the wrath of the law because that's the reason for the law is to serve as a deterrence for others not to commit the same offense so if we really need a way forward we should focus on dealing with the situation and dealing with any type of criminal rather than conniving because it, it is kind of um, the case of a victim and beneficiary mm.
because uh, definitely uh, the police that are, are begging her must be beneficiary to something from the guy or from somebody under the cover and then she is the victim she is suffering so in this case we should apply all the necessary measures to ensure that justice is is is, is done and ensure that uh, uh, the the culprit face the wrath of the law so that can send a message the simple reason for all the law that we have is just to send a message to me that i should not try mm. or attempt or be tempted of committing the same offense right, so that's yeah. that is it that's, that's fair enough. Um, as a security expert, I'd like to get your thoughts on, you know, the state of things s since the new administration. Uh, definitely, I know you've been following all these issues keenly, all the way from the President Muhammad Buhari mm -hmm. um, era. Uh, but we know that um, sometimes uh, we see changes since when a new leader. Administration. Yes. Uh, mm. So, but in this new administration, uh, it, it's almost as though um, cases of insecurity don't take the front burner or are not reported given as much uh, center stage as we used to see where almost on a daily basis there was one story or another is it that things on ground have um, you know gotten better or is it just that they are not being uh, amplified to the general public well to the fact of the matter is things are getting worse things are not really we are not making any progress mm. um initially i was a bit happy and um I was uh, kind of uh, encouraged that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was going to do something quickly in respect to the security for five outlined reasons. One, during his uh, acceptance speech, after when the INEC and I pronounced that he is the one who won the election, he was concerned in his short statement about security. Uh, second, during the inaugural speech, he was so specific and so worrisome and so concerned and he made a very good statement related to that. And uh, three, uh, he tries to appoint a kind of a special advisor on security matters. That was Rivard then, yes. who was who later became NSA. the national security advisor. Oh. And uh, he um, uh, four, he immediately summoned the security chiefs, the Farouk Yahya and others before they left, Irabo and the rest, and all the security heads of agencies. Uh, to a kind of a meeting <coughs> and send a message that gives every, every even ordinary person that don't know security a uh, confidence that he was not ready to accept them not working in synergy and he asked them to go and deal with the situation decisively and do what is right and uh, uh, six um, his first activity his first outing from his the presidential villa was busy to the office of the NSC to see the situation which means because you know in the office of the NSA it's a coordinating mechanism yeah. it's a coordinating center it's a main frame it's a, a framework of any presidential fashion uh, or any presidential policy is uh, where you can enact the policy where we can implement the policy and where you can have a general brief of all the skewed the affairs of the intelligence the investigation and the security matters so this was highly commendable but when it comes to the uh, appointment of the ministers some Nigerians, even though I don't feel sad uh, to some extent, and I feel disappointed to some extent. Uh, why? Because um, appointing Badaru Abubakar, uh, who was never in the military or in any security cycle, that doesn't mean that uh, it is condemnable. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it is commendable. Why I said it can't be condemnable is because minister is a supervising officer. Okay. So it doesn't mean that he must to be a security personnel. And we have seen retired generals, mm. retired brigadiers, retired whatever, that have been appointed. Uh, Dang Ali from Bino Magaji was a minister and he was a retired brigadier or general or whatever. Uh, Magashi was there for, 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 for donkey years. And nothing changed. There, it wasn't, he wasn't eff so effective. I know there was a revolutionary process that was started by, um, um, uh, what do you call him, uh, uh, Borete, uh, Tukur Borete. He has put so many things, which I think if those legacies of Borete administration and um, some of the operations that he started or he initiated. You believe uh, he did well? Sorry? You believe he did well considering uh, uh, the... Of, of the, course, the this was the was Because they tried to manage... The, the the situation not to allow it to escalate despite the okay. fact that they were unable to have some of the machineries arrive in the country so just to cut in quickly uh, I, I don't know if you're aware that um, the defense budget has 
grown uh, perhaps astronomically in the past couple of years, mm -hmm. particularly under President Buhari. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we are seeing, we, or we saw, or are seeing the effects of that increased spending? Or uh, should we start asking questions about uh, the level of transparency that is going on within uh, the defense sector? Well, uh, I cannot uh, comment much on the uh, transparency mm -hmm. because there are we are yet to receive any report from the EFCC and the ICPC and other institutions and even the committee set up by the Senate then. Uh, the Senate, the, the, the nine Senate close without giving us a feedback in that regard. But when we look at the, uh, the establishment, the institutions, the infrastructure, the equipment being purchased uh, during that period, we may, I may not have a justification of how much was spent and how it was spent, but all I believe is there were a lot of huge purchase of the equipment and gadgets. Mm -hmm. There were huge revolutionary activities whereby more extended institutions, even in the proceedings that help uh, initiation of uh, those uh, uh, Lafayette Dole operation, whatever here in the north east, north, north west, south, south, south east, that help in even sustaining the, our democracy. Because otherwise the attention of the military could have been out and post against the, democ the democracy they could have probably uh, d dismantled or uh, uh, kind of um, uh, introduced uh, serve as a co plotters mm. to, to kind of um, uh, disengage the president and take over so whichever way I believe so much that there are a lot of legacies being left behind that need to be built on uh, if there were issues of corruption, corruption you know human being cannot be perfect definitely there will be one two three things and we hope check and balances will expose those things as we move gradually and if there were credibility in the process those credibility we need to have a feedback so that public can know what really transpired and what really happened and why there were allegations and a, a kind of um, excuses and inability to manage the situation uh, pro uh, decisively right. but so we know they were able to maintain the status quo in managing the situation and right. have it uh, kind of a lot of public engagement being uh, uh, made by uh, Brigadier General Kuka Sheka that have been briefing uh, 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 the public, the Nigerian public about the, the, prog the program, the progress and the challenges that they have had. So I think uh, that could be commendable to some extent. Uh, yeah. We can only condemn them if we, we may have an evidence from the findings and the committees that have been set who is checking or who has been checking or getting a report that uh, we can we can test we can tap we can read then we can be able to have an evidence to present before the public right, that's uh, fair enough but you you spoke about the appointments um the former governors uh, Governor Matawala, yeah Governor Badu, uh, so yeah uh, do you think this their work is any harder well uh, in uh, that they have to relate with the experts and the military men uh like well just now i also spoke on transparency is it a bit more difficult for um you know there's a word that the, i know is common amongst them uh bloody civilian as they say you know stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. do you think it's, it's, it's their work is any more difficult than it's well, I, it was a I, I'm, I'm, I'm doubtful that uh their work will be that difficult mm. because it's a supervising affairs okay only the concern that uh some people were asking that uh, Motole was has done very poor in terms of managing security in Zampara State. There were a number of allegations leveled against him in terms of relationship with even the bandits and um, uh, squandering huge amount of resources and what, what may be uh, um, the um, kind of escalation of even the activity and the affairs. And even now what is going on in the state in terms of negotiation being made, being flagged to be uh, uh, being made by the federal government, even though the federal government denounced it, but we will have evidence that it is being laid and initiated by the federal government going by the video clips that we have where somebody is saying that i came from abuja and where one military personnel was even telling the bandits that you kill one of my personnel on so so route on so so date you kill this you kill this and then they pleaded also that zaria to sokoto should not be a part of where the bandits will be attacking which gives a kind of a, a depressional uh, message mm. to the masses that the elites are only after themselves and uh, we have seen it very practical when we had issue when there was echo issue between echoes and uh uh, 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 uh coup d'etat mm. what happened all the ulamas i mean all the sheikhs 
and all the pastors, all the religious leaders in northern Nigeria were put together to do what? To go to the Niger and plead with these guys. But when pervasive poverty and um, um, the issue of insecurity is eaten deep to the core in all part of the northern Nigeria and it's, it's even by uh, being uh, effective on the other southern part of the country. Where are those scholars? Where are those pastors? Where are those sheikhs? Where are those manners? Why didn't they put their heads together to the governors and present the case of the masses uh, before them? So I, I think, uh, um, uh, of course, the appointment of Baderu and uh, Motowale cannot be discredited for now. Mm -hmm. We cannot quickly, we, it's unfair to say that they cannot do what, if an enabling environment is provided, if massive recruitment of the personnel is made, if a quick uh, uh, um, armory, armory review is done, so that we will know those money being spent by Buhara administration in purchase of uh, uh, um, equipment and gadgets and other things, if it is realistic and honest, those arm, arms should be brought out from the armory and be given to the the uh, uh, the personnel that are to be recruited in mass in, in, in mass, so that we can be able to have it dealt with. And um, if at all uh, they have a good technical hand around them, a good consultation, uh, I, I can tell you that an, acad an academician from the university, a professor in political science, a PhD or in the political science, can do better than many generals as a minister of defense. We have seen the, a lot of responsibilities being given to them in some in instances. Some of them have done very well. Some of them were fair. Some of them have performed poorly. So the problem is we don't have system of reward and punishment. If we can introduce that system of reward and punishment, I think well, sky is the limit. Mm. We can change this, the, the status quo. And um, I am encouraging the ministers of defense and the Nigerian public and Nigerian populace and Nigerian managers or political managers, administrators, managers, bureaucrats, that, and the, nation, the general public, that it is very, very uh, doable that we can deal with the situation of the security challenge within 60 days we can bring it down to the 65 70 or 67 uh, percent uh, to what it is so it is it's doable i believe that the appointment of mutole and the appointment of badaru may not be uh, discredited quickly we need to give them uh, some level of confidence and we need to uh, allow them to even though we saw a statement from the Badr Abakar saying that every community has the right to go and negotiate with the bandits. That really scares me. That really made that statement. Uh, uh, Badr Abakar. If at all the okay. statement is credited to him, okay. I saw it going on on the social media. Mm. I have not get his voice, and I have no, I wasn't around when he made that statement. But I saw it going around, and I never saw the minister minister of defense dissociating itself from that. I don't know if they have done so. I, have, I haven't seen it. But I have seen it in many social media outlets that uh, really he made that statement. And I think if really the Minister of Defense could do that statement, then Nigeria is in trouble. Then the appointment is really condemnable. And it's, they are not the right people to be uh, 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 to take the responsibility or the leadership of the, uh, 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 the mantle of the Minister of Defense and the like. No, it doesn't. Fair enough. But uh, let's talk now um, you, you, about, um, you know, the developments. You, you already mentioned that it seems as though things are getting worse. Are there examples of that? Um, under President Buhari, we saw schools being invaded, students being kidnapped. So today, some of them have not been released. Mm -hmm. uh, just the other day, Leah Shraibu was mentioned to have remarried mm -hmm. another commander in the, mm. in the terrorist After forces. the person she was married to died died yes mm -hmm. you know so these are very sad situations what what are the things that are happening now well uh actually the uh level of um mandatory activity is e expanding uh, uh maybe it is not being given the right attention by the media mm -hmm. or probably the governments are dowsing on the subject so they don't want to amplify it amplify it so that people will get to know the real situation but i want to tell you yesterday between uh, 12 noon to 3 a.m of this morning i received more than 48 reports cases of attacks in different communities in the states of sokoto kebi zamfara kasana kaduna jigawa uh, kaduna and, and niger uh, and, uh, and even part of kogi 
So if at all these attacks, I'm getting reports directly from the communities. In almost all the political works, I have my network which I'm leveraging and I'm relying on. They are giving me first-hand information. And in most cases, immediately, in most cases, the immediately the attacks start. I will get the information even before the security agencies have it. And whenever I have such information, I quickly share it with level of authorities, the, the, the state directors of the SSS, the commissioners of police or their uh, allies, the civil defense uh, co uh, personnel and, and alike and other agencies as well as the other public who have interest in the situation so that a pressure can be mounted. But in most cases, what will disappoint you is the, the fact that the, 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 the security agencies don't really have the capacity to face the guys when they are conducting their activity. Mm -hmm. So until when they are done, or they will be shooting from the side, from far away, because they don't have the level of uh, machineries the bandits are carrying are not up to the same of what, even though they may have the same AK-47. But in a situation whereby the, in the Hilux, you have 20 security personnel. Each of them have one AK-47 and carrying two, two magazine. Those criminals, when they are moving on a tricycle, they move in quadruple. And each of them carry a minimum of four to six AK-47. So how is this they, possible? Of course, they, they, they hang it. I'm talking about the, the weapons. It's almost as though uh, bandits and uh, um, terrorists also have some strong budget that they are drawing from. Uh, well, uh, is, is it from the kidnappings? It, it, it may be. It is very possible. Uh, yeah. But then which is about our borders, though, you know. Uh, yes, of course. I want to tell you that the uh, conflict between Ecos and um, Niger coup d'etat mm. has not helped Nigeria and it's not helping Nigeria because a lot of arms are being imported into the country through the forest borders. When Wari administration mentioned that they have closed the borders, all the borders mm. uh, against the rice, uh, onga oil, and other things, yeah. have you stopped seeing it in the market throughout his eight years? So all that uh, Thailand uh, rice is still available everywhere in the country, mm. in every corner. So why has it, has it been coming through? So that was then when there was a good cooperation, collaboration, collaboration, partnership, and um, to, to get a uh, synergy between the Nigerian security at the border and Nigerian security. And at the same time also, Nigerian personnel, all the securities, were helping matters in manning their border to ensure that things are not really effective and not so but now since they withdraw mm. and since nigeria closes its border and uh, of its uh, that uh, the light from niger and other uh, conditions which is really not helping niger uh, even though it's helping it in the way of uh, becoming itself and on its own because i realize that they are working towards their getting their own power source which means nigeria will be uh, 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 in another dilemma when Niger is no more interested in the power supply, looking at the how much money we are making out of it, and um, uh, the issue of river Niger, even though we are not discussing that, but I know that is another security implication which by all will come. So uh, those armor and ammunitions, uh, government could have done uh, so much to have dealt with the situation to fast track uh, through intelligence and other strategic uh, uh, actions and other strategic activity to to stop. The, 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 the arm proliferation which is really the whichever even if the bandits have the money through mm -hmm. the kidnapping for ransom the ransom they are collecting if they have the money and they don't have access if you cut the supply chain if you try as much as you can to know the supply chain process and cut it and block it then they will have no they will end up having no arms but what we are seeing now more and more newer arms we are seeing it in the hand of the bandits and um, it is becoming more difficult for Nigerian security to face them than otherwise. So mm -hmm. which means they are kind of, um, uh, if it is budget from the ransom, then mm -hmm. they are receiving huge. If it is not budget, somebody somewhere at the back is uh, a kind of uh, uh, adding fuel to the fire, to the flame, uh, which means uh, there is um, a kind of a huge amount of money some, somebody somewhere is investing into, making sure that Nigeria is, not, is never at peace. Or probably is the response is the elites, the politicians who are fighting one another that are fueling the crisis and uh, creating an enabling environment and supporting the bandits and so on and so forth. We don't have yet evidence to testify this, but there are a lot of allegations and um, uh, concern that what's really happening because they are being safeguarded and secured 
because wherever they go, the wives of the governors, the wives of the commissioners, they go to different facility, they go to different schools, uh, institutions, even market, they go to su 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 uh, major supermarket, while the ordinary people move around the federal roads and other state roads where the bandits are busy attacking them. And there is even an emergence of a new criminality in the northwestern part of the country, which the government have not given attention to it and may not even be aware of it. Well, the, can we could you speak on that, um, about what the government should react to? Um, do you think some of these things can be nipped in the bud quick enough, or is it the government reacting that even gives these uh, extremist groups more, will I call it clout, or more recognition? Should the government simply go all in and try to end even threats, no matter how small they look, or should they, you know, sit back and say, you know, this is not worth uh, the time and, uh, you know, focusing on it might give, make, make the whatever body it is seem larger than life or thereabouts? Well, uh, in reality, like I keep saying, when I have information about Ahmadine, I know your name. Mm. I know you are working at Captain. I know the location where Captain is. I have access as uh, authority. To come to the gate and ask them to open with such warrant. I know the word hate, the traditional leader man in this area. Mm. I know the religious leader, both the Christian and the Muslim, whether Ahmadin is a Muslim or a Christian. I know how to go through the Christian leader or the Muslim leader to get him. I Ahmadi is always making a phone call. So I can first track his phone call. Because whenever a commissioner's handset is being is snatched or stolen. It easily get recovered yeah. through the phone call. So if that is happening, then it is very easy. It means that it is the internal sabotage, it is the negligence, it is because of lack of seriousness and lack of commitment. That is why we are unable to uh, finish these bandits who are not up to three thousand in the nine nine states that where they are operating. Is it? Is it? Could you say it's the same for um, the uh, oil theft going on in the Niger Delta? Even in the Niger Delta, only the, cr the criminals are known. How did the, uh, um, uh, President Aradua and Good Luck administration get in touch with them? How did they bring them to the book? How did they bring them to the round to have a roundtable discussion mm -hmm. and have an agreement for how to go about the situation? But, but what do you think is happening when, like you say, when these assailants are known and nothing is being said mm -hmm. by the people? Is it out of fear? Is it out of respect? Or is it out of, you know, I'm just minding my business? Why do you think people don't speak out more? when they know take for instance i know that my neighbor is a criminal mm -hmm, engaged in mm -hmm. activities why why be silent why not you know let the whole world know well there are five reasons one lost of trust and confidence on the intelligence agencies who are you know, generating those informations mm. and two uh, poor management of the information itself when it becomes certified that it was correct and three uh, um, the fear of unknown because the security in Nigeria, security operatives uh, personnel in Nigeria are operating under very difficult environment, very difficult situation. So most of them they are not being paid well and they are not being their social welfare and other things is not really done well and the orientation, a lot of corruption has been eaten has eaten deep mm -hmm. into them so as a result of that, they rather go to the criminal and tell him we get social information this information from social person so the person will be afraid of what may be the consequences that is why the public lost the confidence and they are not and um for the orientation the the environment the, the orientation and the prohibition of uh, the security agencies have created a kind of a big and huge gap between uh, public trust and the security services so the relationships is more or less between a dog and a lion you know, or a uh, uh, hyena, uh, or, um, um, uh, um, or whatever you can call, mm. and a lion. Maybe a rat and a lion, or a rat and um, uh, a cat, mm. things like that. So until and unless that or orientation is changed, that is when there will be an easy uh, uh, kind of way of providing information on the criminals. Like I mentioned, it's not everybody that will be boldly talking the way I'm talking. Because I always keep saying that I know all the criminals, I know where they are, and the uh, government knows that I know where they are, and government knows that I know them, and the uh, government knows that the agencies at every level knows that I know they know them, and they know I know they know their locations, and they know I know they know their movements. 
and they know i know they know their capacity and as they know i know why they are afraid of them and why they have not been doing well and if the all the, the military uh, uh, unit uh, uh, leads and all the divisional police officers the area commanders the police commissioners the gocs have not been doing well why can't you bring them back to the book i sent you as a commander with your team and still attack is taking place around the captain so yeah. who is responsible i have a mobile police unit around the captain i have uh, um, a military unit around the captain i have the divisional police office my, around the captain mm -hmm. and i have police command state command around the captain who is overseeing the affairs of the mobile and whosoever and i have i have all access and i have the intelligence of the dss the civil defense and other intelligence of other authorities who can easily generate information and do you have been i i have been giving you promotion despite the fact that you have been uh, you have not been performing you have not been doing well so what does that mean it means that i'm aiding i'm supporting i'm providing i'm creating an enabling environment and somebody who have ten thousand naira in his account before i posted him around captain tv where i know criminality is happening at the end he went back when i post him out of captain to sokoto when i check into his bank account or uh, um, other properties that he possessed i realized that ah, uh, he has become a melonia he has become a billionaire and i have not checked and the uh, um which one twin agency that i have the efcc and icpc have not been making necessary follow-up on all the security senior and the middle age and even the junior personnel to check where do they really get what they possess in terms of resources in terms of properties in terms of liquid cash we even had even though i don't have an evidence that some officers are even uh, celebrating having uh, 200 million 600 million 1 billion liquid cash in their account not to talk of the properties in lagos what i called kaduna abuja kano sokoto everywhere not to talk of taking over the businesses in the northeast taking over the businesses in the north central taking over the businesses in the northwest and taking over even so the farming and colliding colliding and colliding colliding with the, even the criminals uh, the, to, to 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 harvest some of the seized lands Mm -hmm. whereby the the the, the people will, will, will run out of their life uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was about to get to this how mm -hmm. it's also affecting agriculture uh, we've seen where cases where some headsmen or killer headsmen uh, let me call them that way mm -hmm. you know step into these farms attack the farmers some have even cut off hands mm -hmm. and all that um do you think there's a what i call it a, a slow problem building in terms of what's going on at our farms at different places uh, when you go to idp um, camps you realize that a number of the people who are displaced uh, used to be farmers of one form or the mm -hmm, other and now mm -hmm. they no longer go to farms uh, you know they work the government is working so that they can return but it's, bec it's being difficult so in that regard the effect this is having on um on the economy agriculture and all of that uh, is are there uh, is it something that should be given more consideration these days you know uh security and safety uh are primaries mm -hmm. they are not secondary in terms of social service provision so it is very very necessary mm -hmm. if you want to have a smooth running of agricultural activity and economic activity you must have provide a, s a system that will provide an absolute security sec secured free and secured environment where farmers can go back to their farms in order to harvest to plant and um, uh, cultivate what they have they, they plant and uh, to the harvest but you, in a situation whereby you, we realize that uh, bandits are fixing fine against the farmers of a given community here a given community there a given community there they have to give us 2 million, 4 million, 3 million, 100, 500 for you to be allowed to cultivate in so 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 uh, either during the rainy season or during the, uh, uh, the, the dry season or whatever time. Uh, you know, that is a problem. So, and um, like you said, those who are in the IDPs um, uh, who became vulnerable, most of them, more than 98% of them are farmers. And um, we have cases of so many towns and villages that have been uh, shot down by the bandits' activity. And um, yet, 
the, the people have been displaced. So they are displaced from their houses. They are displaced against uh, from their farms. They are displaced from even going into their market activities. So a lot of markets in the northern part of the country and any other part where these criminal activities are going on have been shut down. So shutting those down definitely have effect on economy, definitely have effect on agriculture, definitely have effect on productivity, definitely have e even effect on the, the system, administrative and political operating system. Because uh, most of the rights and privileges of those people who has been displaced, who has been killed, who has been, uh, who are now in the IDPs, have been deprived by who? By the, the beneficiary and the, 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 uh, 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 the, the supervising institutions. Mm. When I say the beneficiary is the personnel who are on ground and they have not been able to do with the situation. Uh, when I say the, uh, the supervising institutions, I'm referring to the government. And it is only when you have a serious government, then you will be able to have these issues being managed accordingly and decisively. All right, fair enough. Um, let, let's start moving to other issues now, um, so we can get more broad look on the state of the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move over to the issue of um, the, the saga concerning the certificate or originality of the certificate of the president. Uh, from the Ch Chicago State University. Um, yesterday, we finally uh, we got, um, I guess, to the final stage, but it has not officially been made mm -hmm. public. But uh, basically, what has happened is that they released the results that they have, uh, which uh, to an extent varies with the results uh, that the president presented. Uh, presented. The yes, but then it didn't automatically mean that the president forged the results. Uh, there still needed to be a deposition for the officials, the registrar, to be put on, on the seat and deposed, and he would have to answer under oath. And that was the final part that we could get, where uh, the lawyers could now ask questions like, um, this certificate that is here, did it come from you? Even if it did not come at the time of graduation, did it come later in case the president lost his original um, uh, certificate? certificate. So that w was meant to, you know, give the final answer. And though few people have already started reporting, um, uh, we can't really delve into that because we cannot confirm it. But it has happened, and now people are looking forward to how this could affect the Supreme Court appeal that um, Atiku Abubakar and uh, Peter Obi will be putting up against President Bola Tinubu. What's your take on this whole thing, and what, I what impact do you think it has on the people and perhaps our international image? Well, uh, uh, first of all, for the fact that uh, Tinubu ran into Chicago University or whatever university mm. to file a case or a motion against uh, the release of the result, I became disappointed. Mm. Uh, and um, also. that's uh, really, uh, we are telling the international community that we are not responsible and we don't have a responsible leader because uh, he is not supposed to prevent or uh, appeal against the suit being uh, uh, filed against him in respect to requesting the institution to release the certificate. I obtained six degrees and four diplomas. And uh, my first degree it was from Amadi Bello University area. My second degree was from Amadi Bello University area. My third degree was from Bayero University Kano. My fourth degree was from Bayero University Kano. My fifth degree was from Amadi Bello University area. My sixth degree was from Kaduna State University. My first diploma was from Bayero University. My second diploma was from, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, University of Meduguri. My third diploma was from Bayero University, and the other diploma was uh, from Kaduna State University. So I, I don't have any fear for anybody to say, no, Dr. Yehuza Giso, you have, and I have four honorary doctorate degrees from within and outside the country from a recognized and highly reputable institutions so i don't what fear will i have to present before anybody that these are honorary doctorate degrees and these are original certificate and degrees that are obtained from these institutions why must it president bola ahmed tunubu waste his time waste his money in order to go and ask the institution not to uh, uh, share the certificate with Atiku. And if at all it becomes a reality that what president presented before the INEC is different from what is, uh, the, what is uh, available at the institution. 
especially even the fact that from some allegations, I don't have evidence, mm. they were saying that the certificate is reading a feminine name. So if it was, it, if it is find, found to be true, then uh, it, it's a big mess and it is a diplomatic insult and uh, it is a kind of um, uh, uh, um, compromising our rep reputation and compromising the capacity and ability of our leaders to be honest. And that's really exposed some of the reasons why we are unable to deal with educational challenges, health challenges, security challenges, and provision of adequate social services. Because we have liars as a leaders. We have deceivers as a leaders. We have cheaters as a leaders. How can a leader of a country, as a whole president, present a fake certificate? So if it is turned out to be really he presented a fake certificate, there are four questions. One, where did he get that certificate? Two, why there is his certificate compromises the certificate from that institution? Three, Tinubu is a male, is not a feminine. Why is his certificate really a feminine name? And four, definitely it is going to put our democracy in question. Probably, I'm not asking the military to take over, but that is signaling because we have started kind of uh, becoming very irresponsible, having very irresponsible politicians as a leaders. If at all we can have this, there is no reason with all these challenges of poverty, hunger, unemployment, a level of um, a perverse poverty, insecurity, and still to have uh, an, an honest leaders that we will never have confidence and trust on them, and they can never remobilize us to, be, to, to look at them as honest and sincere. All right, but, but let's look at what this could lead to. Um, as far as I know, with um, you know, my knowledge of um, uh, the law, <laughs> it is up to the Supreme Court to either allow or um, decline new evidence. Mm -hmm. Now, as at the initial time where the cases were filed against President Tinubu's victory, mm -hmm. none of this was out. There was no official proof. It mm -hmm. was all speculations. And um, even at now, we can't still say what exactly the deposition led to because the deposition cl would clear up everything uh, because you can now directly ask. There is there is a female um, gender here. What happened? And they can say, this is what happened. It was a mistake or it was this. And it, it gives a finality to the matter. Mm, justification. Yes. And now it is already with uh, Atiku Abubakar. Even if we might not know the full details yet, he has all of that. Um, how do you think the Supreme Court should look at this matter? Because now they can say, you know what, we will allow you to add this into your Evidence. appeal or what you want to do. Or they can say, well, we've, we've gone past this issue, we're not allowing it. How do you think they should uh, well, uh, handle this I, matter? I, I don't want to uh, really comment on the issue before the court. Mm. Because I'm not a legal uh, uh, knowledgeable person. I don't have uh, any knowledge to do with uh, issues of law mm -hmm. or administration of law or administration of justice. Mm -hmm. So I want to be fair that uh, it is only a legal unit uh, who may have information and knowledge on the procedure of the court, on the procedure of um, uh, election tribunal or cases like that can be able to comment positively. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me as a common, as an ordinary person, uh, as, um, as an innocent somebody who doesn't know what really the law is all about. For Nigeria and Nigerians refute, the uh, Supreme Court should really allow Atiku to deposit whatever the finding uh, before it. And they should use it based on the constitutional prohibition, which I don't know, based on the legal prohibition, which I don't know, section and subsection of whatever I don't know anything to do with the law. Mm. I only know a few basic legal things that I should not slap a policeman. I should not carry or anybody. Uh, uh, or anybody. Mm. I should not carry, uh, uh, have an uh, arm without license. I should not break into somebody's house. I should not hit somebody's car. So those common sense, mm. common law, and uh, very few other things that I know in the administration. Even though I started... Uh, a master's in law enforcement and criminal justice administration which i have not really finished and i have not given uh, those uh, criminal law books a lot of uh, attention even though i have uh, over 60 of them but i have not given them attention so i don't want to really go into something that is not my area of uh, professionalism
All right, um, uh, that's uh, fair enough. Um, uh, thanks for that. But uh, l let's delve into uh, uh, another issue here now. Um, uh, moving over to the issue of the NLC. Mm -hmm. um, the NLC, you know, um, I believe um, you, we the were Nigeria here. Labour Congress. Yes, uh, we were here on October first when mm -hmm. we were talking, and um, uh, that day I s we spoke with others who believe that the NLC just has a, a what's it called a pattern where they they threaten strike, they get called for meeting, they call off strike. They, and so on and they so get paid. Uh, so they so they allege the yes. So what do you make of um, their? Uh, they had negotiations so far. At the end of the day, I believe the, the MOU they signed um, got a 35,000 uh, Naira allowance. Um, you know, the CNG vehicles, um, some um, commitment on that and so on and so forth. Do you think their strategy is working or is it that, uh, you know, the allegations could be true? Well, um, one, I'm totally against the CNG vehicles. Why? I'm very happy with the provision of... Um, uh, um, increase in the salary because the increase in the salary the money will bo go into the economy and that will boost an ordinary carrot seller and uh, um, uh, a garden egg seller and um, uh, 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 whatever seller of uh, a research card on the streets will help whenever the salary is increased it to go into the economy and it boosts the economy because the people they're receiving the salary are not taking it to Niger or Chad or Cameroon. They are spending it here. So, but uh, for the CNG cars, uh, most of the state transport agencies that we have had before, they have been faring enough, but to some extent, the failures are more than the success. So I believe if really the Tunu administration want to help Nigerian masses, how many people are traveling? How many people are, are using transportation? How many people are moving? What activities do we have available? Do we even have the economic activities that people will be traveling? We don't have. So if really they want to bring back, back the bus uh, uh, to the Nigerian masses that have been kind of uh, 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 sophisticated economically and psychologically, what matters and what should be done is to fix the refineries and stop exporting crude oil and importing refined uh, products. But the head of um, President Tinubu's tax reform um, um, a committee or group said that Nigerians should even pray that our refineries don't work because if it works, the price of fuel per liter will be very high. It's not uh, true. And he said that it's, it's, it's best to it's, just it's, sell it's, the refineries. It's, it's not true. Hmm. It's not true. In a situation whereby your wife know how to cook, you know where to buy the ingredients, you have the money, you understand, and you have the car, and you have the money to buy the fuel, and you know the road route to take your children to school and bring them back, and you know the route to take them to mosque and bring them back, you know the route to take them to church and bring them back, you know the route to visit your relations and so on, but you ask your wife, please stay in the, in the room, keep sleeping every day, when I come back, we'll go to the neighborhood to buy food. I want to tell you that if your salary is 10,000 naira and your wife is the one to go to cook and you utilize it for to pay the school fees, transport your children, do all those runnings yourself, you will not spend up to 70, uh, 700 naira out of the 1,000 naira, uh, presumably, uh, out, uh, 700 out of the 1,000 naira, for example. But if you, you are buying from outside, that would 1,000 naira will not be adequate for you to have two square meals per day. It's unrealistic. You can't even cheat Nigerians when you are drilling in dollar. You are loading in dollar. You are not drilling in naira. You are not loading in naira. The ships that are coming to Nigeria to, 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 uh, to transport uh, the logistics process from the beginning to end receiver, that is the refining companies in the, in the foreign countries. They are the ones, they are, all that transaction is being made in dollar. You are about purchasing the, the refined products in dollar. We are making all the necessary procurement process and logistic process and transportation and shipping process in payment in dollar. And you tell me that in a situation whereby we are refining ourselves, you tell me that if that is the case, why didn't those companies in those countries, why do they refuse to bring their refineries 
in Nigeria so that they can compete with Dangote and other uh, uh, Kaduna and Wari and so on as Potakot if they are to be fixed. That is just a cheat. That is just a deceit. The person speaking should know that Nigerians are no longer full. And we will con not continue to take it. And I believe if, if situation continue, a time will come when Tinubu will not allow himself to be called a president. Because Nigerian youths are finding it difficult. And Nigerian masses are being pushed to the wall. There is a level we are living in a bombshell. The day it will explode, nobody, no military, no DSS, no minute few personnel that we have can control it. And it, 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 it is even affecting them now directly. So they will even support this mass mobilization that will, cannot be controlled by the government. The Tenable administration need to be very, very careful. And anybody who is at the helm of the affairs, either the governor or whosoever, then you need to be very, very careful. I'm warning them. I'm sending a serious warning to them. Because they are signaling more dangers than otherwise. The type of leaders that we have today are not really supposed to be the leaders of this country. Simply because of the way they are managing our situation. The US dollar is now above 1,000 Naira. It is only in 2023, throughout my life, and I am 54 by now, 54, 55. But throughout my days of my life, this is the only, since the time when I became seven, I start to know how much is a mood of rice, uh, 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 rice, maize, millet, corn, and other things. It is only during this 2023 that I saw and I witnessed that the bag sack of maize is being sold at 60,000 Naira. Corn and millet, 55, 58, 60. Beans is being sold at 70,000. And yet, you increase the, the, the fuel price by almost uh, uh, 80 percent and yet the salary of the security personnel is still hundred thousand the salary of amadi is still hundred thousand the source of me myself as a consultant is still remain the hundred thousand everybody's money remains the same what it was and yet you have the gut to go and take five billion five billion and waste in the name of palliative Rather than fixing that, using that money to fix the, 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 the refineries and then have a direct bearing to the economy where the, the economy will, will, will re regenerate and degenerate and then be able to have direct effect on the masses. When you said you are palliative of five, five billion, we saw it live. Even yesterday, Obasanu was on air, the governor of Kaduna State. He was saying that they are targeting one million uh, less privileged. How can you when, you, when you say you target 1 million, how many people, for, what is the population of Kaduna? And what is the population of the less privileged? And what is the population of the people suffering from the increase of the fuel hike? Even the civil servants alone, the members of the NLC, cannot have even 10% of their requirement as a palliative from that rice being distributed by Obasani and other governors. And I saw it myself. I said it I will, and I will repeat myself. I took the pain. I used my own hard earned resources. I used my car. I filled my car. And I have been to five states where I check and monitor the distribution of these palliatives. I saw it myself by myself. Yeah. Whereby a, a, a gauge, a tin of milk, liquid milk, tin of pig, or three crown, or whatever, or luna. Tin, that tin of liquid yeah. is being shared to a household. That of rice and 1,000 Naira. Tell me, what a, even his baby of uh, three years, would, that will not be adequate for her. And for how many days? You, you should show me how to fish rather than giving me the, the already prepared fish. Tell me how to fish myself so that I can catch, catch the fish, have the pain of the smoke, have the pain of the uh, 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 of, of the uh, getting the charcoal have the pain of moving the the the, the uh, uh, washing the, the fish have the pain of uh, frying it or roasting it whatever rather than just waking me up uh, mr Abe, wake up wake up okay uh, oh president well i'm at you i'm here i this is my what's your name mr amir uh, you are from kano from gorza local government guess what yes uh, okay we have one model of rice for you so if you give me one model for rice of rice take for example i have 
two wives and I have nine children. So, and I have other responsibilities. I have the response, I have dependents, up to 24 dependents mm -hmm. on me every 24 hours. So tell me, if you give me one major of rice, assuming you give me one sack, I'm spending, I'm finishing nothing less than three to five sacks of rice in a month. So when you give me one sack today, who is going to give me when I finish it? Is so, the pilot going to come every time? So you know this is this is almost more like the the purview of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Uh, doesn't mean you don't really agree with the way they handle the absolutely giving out. Uh, absolutely, I told you that I financed myself through my hard earned resources, and I have been to five states, and in those states, I go from the state level uh, main store. To the zonal store, to the uh, uh, local government store, and to the end user, to the world level and to the settlement level of distribution. There is no level that I didn't check, even though I random sample. But I saw it naked. I saw it naked. One tin of milk, major of rice, milk, liquid milk. Not uh, 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 the powdered. You know the powdered is big. You can even say it is a big hour. No. It is a tin of liquid milk that was being shared at long side 1,000, some places 2,000. Some places I saw that they were giving one mudu of rice. In some places they are giving one sack of rice per well, household. Well, that's, that's um, very dire. But We've, uh, we've sort of run out of time now, but it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you and getting to get your perspective on these issues. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. It's been mm -hmm. a great pleasure. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye. Thank you. All right, uh, that's how we come to the end of the program for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the polity reaches you live from Abuja every weekday, Monday uh, to Friday, 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Do have a nice day. Bye for now.